This week we're going to add satellite data to our map and be very close to wrapping it up. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to build on the map that we've worked on for the last two weeks. We've only got one more thing to add after this. We're going to start with the notebook that we had last week. So if you've not seen that notebook yet, I encourage you to go back and watch that video. And I've got that notebook up here and run it. And this is the current version of that map. I'm currently plotting one day before the day of recording. So now we're going to add satellite data. We've talked about satellite data before, but as you'll see, there's going to be a couple tricks in getting this to work right. All right, so I'm gonna go up here above my plot, insert some new cells using the A key in command mode for insert cell above. And I'm gonna put a nice markdown header in. And of course, we're going to be using the threads data server and siphon to access it. So I'm gonna make a satellite catalog say threads catalog. Then I'm going to paste in my URL. Again, I keep this in snippets. You could navigate to it graphically if you want, but threads.ucar.edu, threads catalog satellite, goes east products, cloud and moisture imagery, CONUS, I'm using channel two, current catalog.xml. We need to see what data sets are in there. So I'm going to list, Sat catalog dot datasets. Unfortunately, filter time nearest isn't going to help us here like it's done with some of the other datasets that we've used. It just doesn't quite work yet on the satellite collections. So we're going to have to look at these start and end times. The way these are formatted are the year, the three digit day of the year, hour and minute, and we've got the 160 after it. Now we're just going to do some very crude pattern matching. This is not what I would call a production ready solution, but if I'm trying to make a map, this is how I would play with it. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Actually, we'll just leave a couple of these up. Maybe the first five, just so we can get a pattern up here that we wanna match. So as we can see, these are to the nearest five minute plus one in terms of time. And we've got currently DT, which is a date time that is when we ran that first cell of the notebook. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called nearest sat time. On DT, I'm gonna call dot replace minute. And I'm gonna replace the minute with DT dot minute, so the current minute value, floor division by five. So this is how many times can five go into that as a whole number? So floor division, I'm gonna take the, multi the result of that, multiply it by five, and finally add one. So now let's look at what is in nearest sat time. All right, so we've got the year, the month, the day, the hour, and the minute. So we're going to 20 plus one to be 21. So now we're going to create a time string that matches what should be in the data set name here. So time string is nearest sat time dot string format time, strf time. We're gonna look for the S in the beginning the year, the Julian day, the hour, the minute, and 160. And let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks right. So now here's where I'm gonna say this is not the most efficient method to do this, but it's a very concise and understandable method to do it. We want to find what index in these data sets has that time string in it. So I'm gonna use a for loop. We're not looking at, since we're just looking at current data, we're not looking at massive 
amounts of you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of things to iterate through. It's just a few hundred. So for I dataset in enumerate sat catalog dot datasets if time string is in that dataset name. I'm going to set a variable called set index to be i. And then finally, I'll print i. So you see at index 287, we found a data set that matches that. Again, if you were going to use this in production, you would probably want to add some error checking around this. But I want to see if I can get this on the same map, because this is something that has always been difficult to do, but is not as bad now. Okay, so now we need to actually get that data. We're going to use remote access and X-Array, again, just to try to make things easier, and use MetPy's parse CF method. So the satellite data from our sat catalog dot datasets. We're going to get our satellite index. So now we have a data set. We're going to use remote access. Use X-Ray is going to be set to true. And then we're going to actually pull out our cloud moisture imagery or CMI variable. Sat data dot metpy parse CF and the name of that variable, which is sectorized CMI. And we've got a missing underscore there. All right. So now we've got our sectorized CMI variable. We need to go down here and plot it. I'm going to add a comment here that this is our temperature plot. This was our theta e. And this was our logo. Going back and doing some housekeeping in your scripts is always important as you're adding things. Now I'm going to do satellite. So the image extent of the satellite we're going to be able to get from our cloud moisture imagery data set. Use the MetPy accessor and get our X limit. We get the minus one, so the last X coordinate. We'll get the zeroth Y coordinate and we will get the minus one y coordinate. Then we're going to use im show on our CMI variable. We'll set the extent to be image extent. Origin, we want to make sure we set that to lower. We've talked about lower and upper origins in im show before. For the C map, I'm going to use the reversed grays color map. Regrid shape lets us determine how finally we want to reinterpolate this data or retransform this data because it is in a different projection than our map and that projection takes a long time to do. A smaller number here will result in a blockier, more pixelated reprojection that runs faster. 6,000 will take a few minutes to run but produces an acceptable image. Transform from our CMI MetPy accessor, we're going to get to the Cartopi CRS. So what's the coordinate reference system that we're in and what we're going to? All right, so now we should be able to run this. And this map will take a few minutes to run, so don't be alarmed by that. We'll come back and see what it looks like when it's done. All right, so there we go. We've got a map produced now, but we don't see our satellite data. The reason is the satellite data is hidden underneath the temperature plot. So the easiest way to get this visible is to go to our temperature filled contours and set the alpha. So I'm going to set the alpha to be something like half. So we should be able to see through the temperatures and see some of the satellite data, but still be able to see both at the same time. So we'll restart our map and check in on it. Okay, so now we've got our map and we can see the satellite underneath the temperature. For example, we can see clouds out here along these theta E contours that are close together. 
So next week, we'll wrap up our map by doing some conditioning of the data to group these stations into their flight category and coloring the station plot with that information. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MapPy Monday.